A very useful feature in active roles is managed units. Managed units gives you the ability to slice and dice things in Active Directory differently than you can natively in AD. For those of you who've been involved in an Active Directory deployment, you know of those vicious arguments that happened over, gosh, do we want to build our AD OU structure by location, by department, by uh, type of user, type of object, whatever it is. There are so many different ways of doing it. But the problem with native Active Directory is you can only do it one way. However, with active roles, we can slice and dice it every way at the same time. You literally can have your cake and eat it too. We call this managed units. What a managed unit is, is a virtual OU. Let me show you some examples here. So if we take a look, I have a whole tree of OUs here. And you can see that I have, in this particular case, them built by location. So I have Americas, all the users in the New York office, Washington DC, Los Angeles. Here in EMEA, I have Amsterdam. I also have users in other offices as well. Everything in here. How did they get there? With a managed unit, we do everything dynamically. So if I take a look here, what I'm going to see is that my membership rules for that are that the office location of the user in my employee OU, which is where all of my users exist, is exactly Los Angeles. If that's the case, they'll be in this managed unit. When I click preview rule, you can see these are the users who are in that, that managed unit. This is dynamic. If I were to open up one of these users, change their office location, they would be removed from this managed unit and added to another one at that point. All automatically without anybody paying any attention or anybody needing to really do anything in particular. What's great about managed units is that in addition to just making it easier for you to organize your objects, your users, your computers, all of those different things, we also can use these as security principles. So if, if you think back to our conversation about access templates, you'll remember that I told you that an access template is a bucket of rights. We apply it to a particular group or user, like a help desk group or something like that, over an OU. I can also do that over a managed unit. So as an example, if I have a help desk that manages six different locations in one particular geographical area, but all those users are in one huge OU with all the rest of my users, that's going to be really hard normally to figure out, hey, I need to give rights over these users when I can't assign a particular OU to that. Well, I can create a managed unit that says if you're in any of those three offices, you're in this managed unit, and then apply the access template to that particular managed unit. So as you can see, the power here is vast. I can slice and dice it any way I want. And by the way, the example here we've used is office location, but I could also do it by department at the same time. So I could have users be in 10 different managed units while they can only be in one Active Directory OU at the same time. In addition to being a good way to sort things, it's also a really good way to find things that aren't right. Here's an example of what I call problems. So when I used to be an Active Roles Administrator, for example, I had a whole bunch of these managed units. And what these managed units were is a way to tell me when something isn't right. In this case, for example, I have one that says it does not have an employee ID. That means that if a user exists and they don't have an employee ID, they're in this managed unit. In my world, that was a huge problem because it meant that our provisioning system lost track of that user. What I did is I wrote a really quick script that would run once every day and it would send me anybody who is in any of those managed units. And I was able to take that and then take action on it. So you can see that not only can I use it to group things together, but I can use it to help me find things that are wrong. So again, you can see a lot of different power in what you can do with the managed units. Really, the sky is a limit in terms of what you can do.